A man or woman without a clear vision for their lives lives inspiring habits. A very loose life. But a man with a vision, they live a very narrow life. When a man or woman has a vision, their life becomes very, very tight. Why? Because vision simplifies life. Vision controls all of your choices after that. Once you know where you're going, you also automatically know what roads won't take you there. If you know what to do, you automatically know what you shouldn't do. Vision defines your what to do in life. Because vision gives you your address. Your destiny dictates your decisions. See, without a vision, it's tough for you to refuse things. People who discovered vision, they live longer. They live healthier. There's no stress. Stress comes from not knowing what to do. This is no time for experimentation. This is a time for intentional living. You better know your destination because you ain't getting no younger. See, There's some people in your life who are not necessary. Some of you got the wrong company. These people are distractions. When you have a vision, it simplifies life. You can walk up to a bookstore shelf and know exactly what books not to buy. See, vision dictates everything. Everything that you do is supposed to be motivated by your vision. Vision is supposed to be the source of your human motivation. It simplifies your life. Do you know why most people are actually poor? I know why they're poor. Poverty is not a problem. It's a result. Most people are poor because no one knows who they are. What do you mean by that? Vision helps you identify yourself before the people in the world. And because they know who you are, they know what to come to you for. Make yourself a person of value. If someone had to think about something that reminded them of you, what would it be? Because if they never think about you, that means you have never made yourself valuable. Become so good in an area that they can't ignore you. The world is filled with general people. You come to this conference to cease being general. You're not in the general group anymore. Vision is what gives you this unique discovery about what you're supposed to master. Sight is the ability to see things as they are. But vision is the capacity to see things as they could be. All true visions will be tested for authenticity. If your vision is truly from God, life will test it to prove that it's authentic. So get used to the idea of challenges if your vision is real. If a vision is terminated by trials, it was probably not authentic. Vision dictates everything. People who have no vision in their lives, they throw off restraint. They throw off self-control. They have no idea. When you know what you were born to do, it dictates how you should behave and what kind of standards you should live by. You were born to find out what is right for you. When you find out what is right for you, then that's, that's what's right for you. Everything else may be just good or wrong. So preoccupation with a good thing is no substitute for the right thing. Stay with what you're born to do. Whatever you're supposed to do is not supposed to be erased. That's why I am convinced you were not created just to make a living and pay bills. You were created to give life and make a difference with your gift somewhere. That's why you came to this place. All of this that I have is really because of the grace of God. Now, you got to have a tremendous work ethic to be successful in here. In other words, you got to have a lot of dog in you. It's going to be a lot of trying time. So you have to have a tremendous work ethic. But you got to have faith. Faith without works is dead. You hear it all the time. You go to church and you learn all these scriptures, but then you don't apply none of them to your life. I maxed out three, four scriptures to get here. I kid you not. See, these, are, these principles of success, they've taken all of these scriptures and they're putting them in books. Everything comes from the Bible. You really don't need self-help books. All of that information is in Proverbs. They just reworded it because people don't know how to read the Bible. I'm just giving you real talk now. I'm just trying to tell you how I got here. Your real life, the one God really got for you, is in your imagination. It is not in your current situation or your current paycheck. Your problem is you keep telling your imagination to the wrong people. See, if you want to kill a big dream,
tell it to a small minded person it's dead how many times man have you had a tremendous idea something you thought was the one and you went and told it to your loved ones and your so called friends and they shot it down I mean you was convinced that it was just oh man I just came to you and you told it to me and they shot it down and you thought since they was your loved ones and they friends and they got your best interests at heart you believed them you was wrong you let them talk you out of what God got for you everything you have everything we have in this world somebody imagined it faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen I talk to so many people who get older and they've lost the faith if you are sitting in here thinking that you're too old to listen to what Steve hell I'm 60 I'm 60 years old but I still rely on my imagination see if you think you're too old to make it let me give you a prime example Colonel Sanders has been frying chicken his whole life he was telling everybody he had the best chicken in the world ain't nobody believing they turned him down everywhere Colonel Sanders didn't get a franchise till he was in his 60s. Kentucky Fried Chicken sell more chicken than anybody in the world today. So if you're sitting there thinking because you got a little gray on you, you're too late. As long as God waking you up in the morning, that's the sign that he ain't through with you. What I'm sharing with you is stuff that everybody can apply today. I'm just a real dude. I don't even have the education you all have. I flunked out of school. I was hoping I would get on TV. I wrote it on a piece of paper when I was 10, but when I wrote it on the paper, it wasn't factual. I was just hoping. You just got to start with the hope. Faith is the substance of things that you hope for. You just hope something, Joe. But if you take this scripture, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Because you're the only one who can see it. Your imagination is actually God showing you a preview of a coming attraction that he has for you. The moment you don't believe in your imagination, you negate what he got for you. Some of y'all still sitting here with the ambition of opening a business one day, but you scared to go start the business because you got a job and you got bills. Rich people got bills. Everybody got bills. Hell, I got bills. You're going to let the fact that you got some bills stop you from opening the business, the thing that God done put in your imagination. So you're going to squash that because you got bills. Everybody got bills. Nobody's going to take you to the front of the line unless you push your way to the front of the line. Let me tell you that again. Nobody is going to take you to the front of the line unless you push your way to the front of the line. I want you to take the craziest dream you ever had. That dream that you were too embarrassed to tell anyone about. And I want you to go after it. I want you to make it a reality. I don't want you to dream, I want you to do. I know that you've heard the cliche quote that life is a marathon, not a sprint. Well, I'm gonna tell you, sometimes you don't even have the time to prepare for your marathon. Now, some of your dreams are gonna take longer than you think. One of the biggest lessons that I've learned in life is that you cannot achieve success without failure. But I made a decision to keep going, keep trying, even if it meant sometimes that I would fail. Some of my biggest successes come from some of my biggest failures. In the early 90s, when my friends were graduating from Howard, I didn't have a degree. My girlfriend was eight and a half months pregnant with my first baby. I bought a brand new house in Scarsdale that I could not afford. I found myself sitting alone in my bedroom and asking myself the question, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? So I had two choices. Either I was going to sit in that failure and give up, or I was going to make a decision to step out of the darkness. You see, when you're in that darkness, you want to sit there and wait for the light to come but you can't wait and sit in that darkness. The only way out is to step forward, to face your fears, to become your own light. I had to believe in myself like never before. I had to find my inner power. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. There's gonna be a lot of times y'all about to fail. I'm still failing every day. We are all a work in progress. And one day, you'll be sitting in the dark like I was, and you're gonna be asking yourself, what am I going to do now? 
But in that moment, I want you to remember the power of you. Don't be afraid to close your eyes and dream, but then open your eyes and see. For a lot of people, the distance between their dreams and their reality is intimidating and they get stuck. And the only way forward is to be real about what it's going to take for you to achieve those dreams. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to tell yourself the truth of what it's going to take for you to be successful. It doesn't come easy. You're going to have to go out there and get it. Nobody's going to give you nothing. There's no rescue team coming, no National Guard, no aid coming, nothing. You're going to have to go out there and get it. And the only way forward is to decide you want that dream so bad that you are going to work harder, you're going to get up earlier, you're going to stay later, you're going to push past the people who doubted you and laughed at you and hated on you. I want you to be fearless. I want you to be decisive. I want you to make a decision right now that when you fail and you fall to your knees, I want you to remember the power of you and I want you to get back up on your feet. Make a decision today that when you're in the darkness, you'll remember the power of you. You are your own light. I want you to remember three things. Number one, I want you to never be afraid to make a decision. Be decisive. Don't be afraid to fail. Be fearless. Number two, I want you to remember the power of you. Number three, now as you face these obstacles that I'm telling you about in your life, y'all know my motto, can't stop, won't stop. Tell me they can't do something. You're not supposed to tell people they can't. But I will tell you tonight that the most powerful motivational speeches that I have ever heard came from people who told me I couldn't do something. Because when they told me I couldn't do it, I was bound and determined to show them that I could. Tell me I can't do it. I will prove you wrong. I will show you that you're mistaken. You have chosen the wrong one to tell that they can't do something. Because I believe and this is real important. I can't, will thwart you, will stop you, will slow you down, will turn you around and cause you to move backwards if you let it. But if you have the proper mindset, I can't, will do nothing but make you that more determined to get to your goal. People will tell you obsession is a bad thing. If you want to be great, not good, not second, not third, if you want to be great, the very best at what you do, obsession is a necessity. You must be. Ain't no two ways about it. Nobody got to be the best at anything. I don't care if you flip pancakes, if you're the very best at it, you are obsessed about it. And obsessed about it means you slept and you dreamed and you ate that. I will be the very best at what I do. I am determined to be the very best at what I am. Nobody can tell me that I can't do it because I am obsessed. That is one necessary key to unlock the power of I can't. You gotta be obsessed with whatever your goal is. Next, question the impossible. The greatest achievements of mankind were made by people who questioned impossible. I speak to you from experience. I can't tell you how to go through something if I never been through anything. I cannot tell you how to win if I have never won, but I will show you, I will show you what I can do. I will show you, I will turn your, I can't, I will never, I won't, it's impossible. I will turn it around and I will show you that I can do anything, anything. That is my message to you. Let the I can't fuel your fire. If I can do it, every last one of you can do it. It's hard changing your life. It's not easy. In the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan, where I was operating my business, 
and I fell on some hard times and I was sleeping in my office and it was hard coming through the lobby and sometimes they would laugh there's a guy talking about becoming successful and look at him he's bathing in the bathroom upstairs on the 21st floor he sleeps on the floor him and two other dreamers up there look at him it was hard ladies and gentlemen coming to speak to people and I was facing financial difficulties in my own life it was very difficult to pick myself up each day believing that I could do it there were times that I doubted myself I said God why why is this happening to me I'm just trying to take care of my children and my mother I'm not trying to steal or rob from anybody it was very hard and here's what I want to say to you for those of you that have experienced some hardships don't give up on your dream their rough times are going to come but they have not come to stay they have come to pass it's a long shot ladies and gentlemen from liberty city an abandoned building on a floor never knowing my mother or father it's a long shot no college training labeled educable mentally retarded but i kept running toward my dream it's very important as you hold on to that dream there are moments when you're going to doubt yourself what i'm doing now i could have been doing years ago but because I did not have a college education, because I didn't believe in myself, because I allowed other people's opinion of me to control my destiny, I didn't act on my ideas. Get the energy drainers out of your life. People who don't want anything, people who are not striving, people who are not challenging themselves, people who aren't growing, people who have stopped dreaming. It's necessary that you align yourself with people who are unstoppable and unreasonable. People who are refusing to leave life just as it is and who want more. Birds of a feather flock together. If you run around with losers, you will end up a loser. It's necessary that you get the losers out of your life if you want to live your dream. It's necessary to know that everybody won't see it that everybody won't join you, that everybody won't have the vision. It's necessary to know that, that a lot of people like to complain, but they don't want to do anything about their situation. Most people don't work on their dreams. Why? For many years, I didn't. One is because of fear, the fear of failure. What if things don't work out? And the fear of success. What if they do and I can't handle it? You know, you have to know within yourself that I can do this even if no one else sees it for me I must see it for myself many times we can have a great idea but if you're not advancing it in the right way and things don't happen you become discouraged and think the idea doesn't work no that's not true it's necessary that you be flexible that you are always thinking of how can I improve this better because you model integrity and determination and ambition and truth and honesty no one can do it for you but you and even though you face disappointments, even though you will experience some setbacks, it goes with the territory. You must understand that. I want you to know that you are blessed and highly favored. And that as you go toward the future, begin to know that you have greatness within you. It's possible for you to live your dream. It's necessary that you associate with winners, that you work your system, that you are relentless, that you never give up. It's you. You've got to take personal responsibility. You've got to make it your personal business to make it happen. And you've got to resolve within yourself that I can do this. I'm the one to make this happen. I'm the one to become successful in this business. As you work to help other people to become successful, that feeds your success. But you know it's going to be hard, but find out what will make it worth it for you. What if we have that kind of attitude, the cars repossess, nobody believes in you, you've lost again and again and again, the lights are cut off, but you're still looking at your dream, reviewing it every day and say to yourself, it's not over until I win. And if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope and confidence and stern pertinacity, with the help of God, you'll get it. It's been a plum pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege. Thank you. Everything that I have is by the grace of God. I didn't always stick with him, but he always stuck with me. So stick with him. If you think you want to do what you think I've done, then do what I've done and stick with God. Number two, fail big. Fail big. Take chances to dream big. But remember, dreams without goals are just dreams. And they ultimately fuel disappointment. So have dreams, but have goals. 
And understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. You have to work at it. Hard work works. Working really hard is what successful people do. Just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse movement with progress. Number three, I don't care how much money you make, you can't take it with you. Finally, say thank you in advance for what is already yours. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. And anything you want good, you can have. So claim it, work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back, pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference.